Hey everybody and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, the beginner series, or as Scott likes to call it, from noob to expert in 10 days with Scripta. <laughs> 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 See? I only half made that up right there. <laughs> okay, so we're still live streaming and we're still recording at the same time. And last time we have uh, spoken about the general layout of the top bar. Well, a little bit of it. We didn't really get through all of that because it's a lot to cover when you actually do a tutorial-ish kind of thing. So we're going to continue straight away. We've done uh, looking at our political situation when you press the flag. We've done the research. Uh, we've done the construction and we stopped in a production, the green one, which for most of you will not be green. Like I said in the beginning of the series and the stream, look it up in the description. That's where you find my UI mods. There's nothing in there that modifies the gameplay. It's just visual stuff. So don't worry about this. Uh, it makes it easier for me to explain, to say just, you know, hit the green button and not. Uh, it's in the top bar on the left, the fifth from the right, I think. So, just, you know, the green one at the top there. <laughs> makes it easy, right? Yes, it does. So it's a big enough tutorial. You want to have it easy. <laughs> okay. So, when we are still in a production, we have just fitted around a little with the Navy. Now, the Navy works different from the rest of the production here. If you look at your infantry equipment or any of the others, you see that on, on the right-hand side, you can assign up to 50 military factories. Next to that, on the right, it will tell you how much resources you need. And we get to resources in a second. And on top of that, it will give you an efficiency bar. Now, if you hover over that, it will probably have a um, light greenish part and a red part, right? Um, which one? The efficiency uh, bar on, on any of your military right. production things. I have product efficiency cap. Is that the one you're talking about? Probably. Well, that's on the very top, right? With the, all the percentages there. Yeah, 70%, mm -hmm. 5%. If you well, th that's that's important as well. We get to that in detail. Um, okay. But if you go to your your infantry equipment production, for example. Oh, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. That should have a bar on on the top, a bar of your fifteen factories or whatever many you put in there. Oh yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. And okay. that bar is usually well. If you're lucky, it's green. If you're not that lucky, it has a red part to it and a yellow it... line, a vertical line. Yes. Yes, that yellow, is. that yellow line represents your efficiency cap. All your uh, production will work up from basically, I have no idea of what I'm producing here, up to, I can do this with my hands tied behind my back at the night with, with a, a, I don't know, a shoe carton above my head or something. So they uh, raise their efficiency the longer this goes on. And if you hover over that bar, it tells you actually, for me here, for example, production efficiency is 49.78%. It increases by 0.098% per day. So you can do the math and see when this actually reaches maximum and maximum would be my production efficiency cap 70.07 percent so i get what 0 0.1 per day so 10 days for one percent i'm at 50 percent i need 70 so that's 20 so it's 200 days roughly and gives you some other stats like base uh, cap is 50 percent due to the difficulty we get another 20 percent and then it gives you a te uh, text of what the efficiency cap and production efficiency and all of that actually is and how you can increase it okay but uh, that's how your production usually works for pretty much everything doesn't matter if it's basic infantry equipment or tanks or support equipment or fighters it all works the same the moment you start a factory line it will give you um, production efficiency very very low and the more factories you assign the lower it gets because you know it's more factories working on the same thing but then it will skyrocket up until it reaches the cap which will give you the maximum output so for the moment I'm making 78.27 guns per day with my 50% efficiency that I have if you add another 20% on that well then we would be at what 92 guns per day or so another 14 on top roughly so you can do the math on that as well if you go down to whatever your navy is currently producing, those don't have a bar. Those work differently. First of all, you have to tell how many submarines, for example, you actually would want to produce. You can set that to unlimited and just say, well, continue until I tell you to stop. Or you can say, okay, I need six of these or five of these. And it will just start to produce them. They have a fixed amount of time they take. So for me, it says, yeah, I do 2.2 per year. Um, production efficiency is 100%. That doesn't really change, it seems. There's no bar that tells you, but it does have a button on top that says auto, right? Yes. Good. If you click on auto, 
it will give you um, another fold out menu where it gives you all the ports that you have where you can deploy your navy and on top of that wow. marked in blue it will give you all the fleets that you have so you can deploy submarines directly to an existing fleet and they will just be added to that fleet or you can just say well your home port is i don't know hanover and they will just or for you probably rome or th something like that and they will just go there and form well they won't really form their own fleet they will just be sitting there for you to do with them whatever you like so I'm just going to click on auto and I'm just going to put them all to the very first fleet that I see there. So whenever these are done, they are going to be assigned to that fleet. And I'm doing that on purpose because in a second we're going to take care of all those fleets and merge them into one big fleet and then just let them sit there until we need them. Okay, so my deployment for all of my navy lines now says Kriegsmarine, which is the German war navy. It's weird that you need to call a navy war navy, but that's just the Germans, right? Purposeful names. <laughs> Alright, and we last time we set them all to produce just one, so once they are done, they will not produce any more. And then we get back to that. What we should do right now is you see on top where it says military factories and naval dockyards in your production list? Yes. Good. Below military factories, you have three separate icons, and below naval dockyards, you have just one, right? Yes. Mm hmm. Uh, you click on the one for, for the naval dockyard where it says build ships if you hover over it and then you select convoys which should be at the very top. Yep. That will give you one production straight and it will say, uh, well there's nobody really assigned currently because we don't have any free dockyards, at least for me it says that. But I will assign all 15 so I will click on the you know bottom right factory slot to fill them all up. They are highlighted in grey. Grey because there is no factory there, but we have reserved 15 slots. So whenever a factory or a dockyard becomes available, they will be put in there. So whenever my ships are done and that production straight gets deleted, my submarines are currently using five dockyards. These five dockyards will filter down the list and will eventually arrive at the convoys. And they will just start making convoys. Well. And convoys always say stockpiling because convoys cannot be assigned anywhere. They're just an automatic thing that runs from basically any port where they are needed. Okay. Good. We're gonna, just going to have them in there. That's how it's going to work for now. Alright, that's uh, enough for the production for now. Like I said, we're going to go in-depth with all of the figures and stats and things you can do here once we need that, once we actually have a warrant we need it. Just to say that docks are working differently than the other production straights. That's why they're in blue and not in, in green, yeah? <laughs> Okay, so what else do we have up there? There's another few buttons that we haven't used that, and we're not going to do that just now. What I want to do now is click on the flag, and then you will see that it opens a menu where it says select the national focus on the very top. Yes. Click on that, and you get your focus tree. Yep. And there's a lot. So all these focus <laughs> trees have different colors depending on what you can do that, with them. Most of them have this, this brownish background that just says, you can't click on me, I'm not ready to be done. And then you have some that are gray, it's mostly those on the very top. You can click on those and can start researching them. And later on and during the game some of them will turn yellow, you've already researched those. And I think the one you're currently researching will be green or something. No, I'm not 100% sure, you don't, don't usually watch that too closely. So this, this whole focus tree thing is usually divided in sections. You usually have something um, that gives you bonus or boni bonuses for your industry. You will have political stuff, you will have stuff for your air force, for your army, and for your navy. And it just depends. Let me have a look at your focus tree right here. i show you how to do that later. So you have Ethiopian war logistics on the very top left, and then you have industrial effort, industrial effort 2, fortification, extra research, that's one of the trees you can go down. So that looks like a very specialized industrial upgrade thing. Then you have army privacy and Mare Nostrum. Well, Mare Nostrum, our uh, sea, um, for the, those who understand Latin, haha, <laughs> um, that is basically um, upping your navy supremacy if you will depending on what's actually in there you have carrier effort and capital shift effort that will give you different things tailored to your navy army primacy well that gives you stuff for your actual army usually then going to the right there's light ship effort okay that's also for your ships and then you have triumph from africa that's your very specialized political tree first thing that says when you hover over it 
Uh, completion time 70 days. Most of the focus items, focus tree items, need 70 days. There's a couple uh, that don't, like Russia has one that lasts for 210 days, uh, but most of them are 70. No need to really worry about that now. No national focus prerequisites. One of the following must be true. Owns Ethiopia or Ethiopia is a puppet of Italy and it has a red X that says, nope, you haven't done that yet, right? <laughs> right. The effect you get, gain base national unity of 20%. So the effect itself, I'm going to say that just now, it's, it's not really that good. It's a good thing to have, sure, you get something for free and something good to have, but it's not like getting 10 military factories for free, right? So you don't get an immediate gain from that, but it enables going down that tree. For example, if you hover over claims of Yugoslavia, it says requires triumph from Africa. You can't go down there until you have done that. So the very first thing you need to do to go down that tree is actually triumph from Africa. You need to win your war against Ethiopia, which you have going on. Uh, I'm coming that to, back to that in a second. So what you could currently research... Let me, let me have another look. I close that foolishly. What you could do is, well, any of the gray ones. So I guess lightship effort, Mara Nostrum, Army Primacy, and Ethiopian war logistics are gray, right? Right. Uh, go Ethiopian war logistics. Because it gives you infrastructure and a naval base in that province. Which basically will add to the amount of supply that you have down there. Which will make your army stronger. Because currently it's pretty crap. Okay. Good. Uh, you know where to find Ethiopia on the map? Yep. Good. If you check that area, there's uh, green Italy territory above and below. And you should have yep. some troops stationed there. Yeah, I got... Uh... Four below and ten. And some more. <laughs> yeah. All right. Fourteen above. So we're now gonna get into making armies. You should see um, to the right of all those buttons we discussed. There are some numbers like zero, 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 and whatever. And below that yes. are some more buttons, right? Yes. These buttons are the main alerts of the game that tell you that something is going on that needs your attention. So one of them would have been uh, you don't have a national focus set. If you just selected one, that should have probably gone away already. Yes. I'm going to go mine in a second here. Uh, then it probably says no divisions in basic training, which is those green men with the exclamation mark. Yes, it is. And you should have the same in red without the exclamation mark that says unassigned divisions. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Okay, we need that one in a second. For now, um, just you know, take your mouse and left click and drag around those units that you have in Ethiopia. While all I do the them? same somewhere up else. In, yeah, I would, in, I, I would go. I would go all of them. Okay. And that should open up a list in the top left below your flag, showing you that you have some divisions selected. Eighteen divisions. Good. So it has a little disband, a little trash can icon, then it has a little change division template, and then it tells you you have however many divisions selected. And then there's a bunch of other stuff in there that we're not going to get into just now. And then below it gives you a list of what you've actually selected, right? Yes. Alright. At the very bottom of your screen you should have the silhouette of a guy with a plus. That's yes. glowing. Alright, click, yeah, click on that one. You should now have formed your first army. Yes, army one. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that really changes is it gives you the same um, the same stuff in the top left that we had before with a little extra box on top uh, where it has that, that silhouette of that guy. It says it's army one. You can click in there and rename that. You, you can rename that to Ethiopian front if you wish. It doesn't matter. Uh, then it tells you there's eight divisions in that army right next to the name. And then there's four buttons right there that become yes. important a little later. And to the right of that is a little colored thing. When you hover over that, it folds out. Yes. If you click on that, it will give you a whole color slider thing. So you can give your army a color by either using those sliders or by using the nine predefined colors there. So let's say you make green or whatever. Uh, to the right of those colored buttons, you can select a well army icon by using the arrows up and down. If you click on those, you can go through quite a lot. In the base game, you don't get as many as I get here because that's one of the mods I use, I believe. Yes. But yeah, you know, just pick whatever you like. Okay. On the very on the very right side, it should say Italian Theater 1 and then there should be that icon in that color that you've just set up. Yes. 
usually it only takes the color once you fold that back in. So click on that little arrow again and then it should port over. Got it. All right, so that's your, your well, theater. You can have multiple theaters and they do different things and we're going to get to that later. That's just how you find your army again. Or you look down at the bottom where you have the silhouette of the guy and below it says, well, what, however many divisions you have selected in there. Right. All right, that's how you make an army really, really quick. That's how you assign troops. If you want to assign more troops, uh, you just find some other troops. You, you drag your mouse around them uh, to get them selected and then you can right click on the guy that you already have there at the bottom of your screen and we'll just add to them that's for now good you don't have that right now because you only want those around ethiopia right right um when you have those selected or when you click on that on that guy in the bottom there it says in the top left click to assign where that silhouette is right yes it does mm -hmm. when you click on that you can select a commander aha now, commanders give you different additional skills to your army. There's two types of commanders. You have a field marshal and you have a general. How do you um, how do you see which one is which? Well, all the field marshals don't have the number 24 on the right side of their name. And the promote button. Right. Um, there's three buttons on top. Capacity, name, and skill. I don't know why you ever want to sort them by name. It's probably just if you try to be really historically accurate and you're searching for somebody. The buttons you use is capacity to have the field marshals on top and the generals on the bottom. Or click it again, it's the other way around. Or skill. And I most, most times I use skill. So click skill until you have somebody that on the left side of his picture has a high number. Okay. What number is that? Um, the number on the left or the right? On the left. On the left. That's number four. Good. On it's the right, four. it should say 24, right? Yes, it does. All right. Um, yeah, just use that guy for now. Promote. Yeah. No, not promote. Just click on him. Oh, just click on him. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. We're good. Mm -hmm. Now, on the bottom of your screen, it should have his picture. Yes, it does. And below that, it should say, like, 16 out of 24, right? 18 out of 24. 18 out of 24. Good. If you look in the top left, you will have his picture again, then it says Army 1, and then it also says 18 out of 24. Yes. That's where you find that information. A general has a maximum division limit of 24. Any more divisions assigned to that general, and you suffer a penalty. So if you have 18 out of 24, you're good. You can basically, if you had, you could add six more and you would be max strength. Okay. If you select a field marshal, he will not have um, that limitation. You can add 180 divisions to a field marshal. You can add 600 to a field marshal. It doesn't matter. The difference between general and field marshal is in the skills they get. And we come back to that way later. Currently, it's just good to have him because if you hover over his, um, where is it? If you see in the uh, in the top left where it has his picture, next to that it says his skill level. It should say four, right? Um, yes. If you hover over that number four, it actually tells you it's skill four, zero percent advance to the next level, attack plus twenty percent, defense plus twenty percent. Yes, it does. Every skill level gives you an extra five percent on that. Nice. So that's good to know. So there's no reason not to have any kind of general. You just pick a level 1 general and you get 5% on both stats, just like that. British Telecom is following. Thank you very much. Telecom, not Telecom. <laughs> British Telecom. Is that official or is that just your name? Because I, I had issues with British Telecom in the past. I lived in Belfast for a while. That, that's just all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> All right, so you have those guys. Uh, we need to make sure that you um, win that war down there. So we need to skip ahead some stuff before we actually get into the, the stuff that I originally wanted to do. That's interesting. But, yeah, well, you know, if we have to do that, then that's what we have to do. Okay. Um, so we're going to skip the resources and the training for a moment, and uh, we're just going to do your stuff, the stuff that you need. So... How am I going to do this? Because I can't really see what you're doing on there, so I have to basically play it by ear. You so should have some units in the top um, state, well, above Ethiopia, and you should have some in the bottom area, right? Correct. So that's Somaliland and Eritrea. If you 
hover over that actually tells you. Italy controls this location in Eritrea. Yep. Alright, so you're gonna select by just dragging your mouse around them. Select the guys in the top. Yep. And then you should have at the bottom, it should say battle plans. Uh, battle plan. Yes. Right. Uh, one, two, it's the third from the left where it says front line. Yep. Right, click you're just going to click on that. And then you click on the yep. border between your territory and Ethiopia. I don't have to draw the line. Just no, click just it. left click. Yep. If you hover over that front line, well, the, the icon front line actually says click on one of the borders against another country to set the assigned front line. Right click and drag to set apart and right click and drag on existing front lines to edit them. So if you just left click it will just take the whole front line and that's what you want for now. Okay. Alright, then you're gonna do the same with the guys in Somaliland at the bottom south of Ethiopia and set a front line there. Oh, While there I'm gonna do it up here to actually show the people how that works. So, uh, we're gonna do an army here real quick. Let's take all of these. Let's make an army. Let's give them a general. That guy. And then we're going to left click this and say Poland. And now we have a front line. And if you zoom in on that front line, it actually tells you here 13 divisions, Army 2. And if I look it up, this is Army 2 and it has 13 divisions. So everybody is assigned here. And as soon as we hit play, they will actually move to cover this front line. So you've done that, right? All of you guys are good? Yep, all good. Hmm. It's worth learning, guys. Took me like a week, but I tell you, listen to Mr. Scripter. I just leave this here. Well, thank you very much. I know exactly who you are, and I like it that you actually said that about me. Oh, that's perfect. Cool. All right. Um, we're about done for this episode already, so we're just going to do one more thing. Um, you are going to control right click on that front line that you've just done. If you actually hold down control and hover your mouse over that front line it will tell you what it does control click to assign selected units to this order control right click to select units assigned to this order correct so if you do control right click it will select all those divisions that are currently assigned to this front line okay then you're going to go back down to your battle plan selection down there and you're going to take uh, you're going to take the fourth icon from the left which says offensive line yes now you should have the territory that your front line is at should have the the stripes over it right all of that territory can be used to draw um your offensive line how do you do that well you just go in there and you select the location that's worth taking and then you right click and hold and just draw a front line. So for you, that location would be the capital, which is Addis Ababa. Draw it right across it, or just on it? Just start in that province, and then probably go to the province to the right, because that has a little a little dot in there, which is a victory point. You want that as well. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that should now give you an arrow going downwards, and it should give you the actual offensive line, the end of this, well, spearhead operation, if you will. Both on that arrow and on that actual uh, offensive line, it should tell you how many divisions are assigned and from which army they are. And that line should be the same color as the army you've selected. Right? Yes. Good. Um, you're going to do the same in the south. Right click on that front line and give them an offensive line. Actually, the same. Just, yeah. Let them go to the capital. Ethiopia will capitulate once you take the capital. So that's what you want to do. Okay, so... For them... No, why is it doing that? What is it doing? Let's try. Draw a line. Control right click. Now that... Now my army from the top is continuing down. Mm-hmm. As long as you have right click pressed, you can hit tab a couple times and it will switch the front line from which this arrow is going. Okay. So I can do this up here as well. I can set up this offensive line and then I can say offensive line here 
And you see this continues the one from before. If I hit tab, that will switch. Okay, so let's try this again. Select these guys. Mm -hmm. Control right click on the front line. Right click. And, and click on offensive line. Then right click and hold to draw your offensive line and hit tap as many times as you have to until that arrow actually comes from the bottom and not from the top. Yeah, it's, it's not doing it. Sure. Now it changed the line from the guys up top to... We're not allied yet, so I can't see it. Well, doesn't matter for now. We have set it up, and we will fix that in a second. And then we come back in the next episode, because we are over time. Right. So, for those on the stream, don't go anywhere. We'll continue straight away. And for those watching the video, that's it for this episode. Don't forget to justify a subscriber goal. Blitzkrieg the like button. Follow me on Twitter if you want to catch the next live stream. I'm Scripter, he is Scott, and you are dismissed.